wonder and mystery. You walk alongside us on the journey of our lives. Yet like those on the road to Emmaus, we spend most of our journey unaware of your presence. Like them, we are so focused on our own fears and uncertainties that we fail to notice that the world is becoming something new with every step. Open our eyes to the wonder of your presence. Help us to feel your teachings burn inside us so that we are compelled to go out and share with others. Amen. Will you please join us in the responsive reading? As we walk on the road today, may Jesus himself come near. As we hear the word of God, may our hearts burn like a fire inside us. As we offer welcome and share with each other, may our eyes be open so we recognize the risen Lord. Amen. Amen. joy of Easter may continue in our hearts. We pray that you will open our hearts to hope, to new life, and to the presence of Jesus among us. We thank you for the new life that we have in you as we walk, as you walk beside us on this journey of life. May we feel our hearts burn within us as we listen to your word and remember the good news you bring. Help us, God, to be faithful followers, to have the changed hearts and lives that you so want for us, to have hearts and lives that show your love in all we do. Help us to remember the example of Jesus, whose life showed us what it means to truly love, to offer kindness and welcome, healing and service, forgiveness and compassion for all. But as much as we try, we just can't live up to that example. Forgive us when we fall short, when we are impatient and unkind, when we are selfish and judgmental, when we turn away from those in need. Forgive us, God. Show us mercy. Give us clean hearts so we may keep trying day by day to live as your people. 
We ask, dear God, that you be with our church. Help us to be a community that does its best to serve you and to serve others. Help us to be welcoming to all your children. Help us to share your good news in our worship, our music, our teaching, and in the way we love one another. Help us to listen for your guidance and to go where your spirit leads us. We pray for your world, God. There is so much brokenness and pain, so much violence and war, so much hunger and grief. Be with those who are working for peace. Give them the strength and courage to continue working for change. Be with those who are trying to bring food and aid to war zones. Be with hospital workers in Gaza as they try to give care under nearly impossible circumstances. And be with the family and friends of those who have lost their lives as they try to help others. Be with all of those who have been fleeing from gang violence in Haiti. And then with all of the places that are struggling to provide a place of safety for all of them. Be with all of those who fear and pray and grieve as they live in places of war and violence, in Haiti, Ukraine, Palestine, and so many others, and especially in Burma, where things seem to only be getting worse. Hear our prayers, O oh Lord. Bring your hope, your comfort, your healing, and your peace. We pray, dear God, for the members of our congregation. We pray for those who are in need of your help, your healing, your comfort. We pray for those who are suffering from illness or chronic pain. We pray for those who are struggling with financial worries. We pray for those who struggle with addiction. We pray for those who are in need of healing of broken relationships and broken families. We pray for those who need your comfort and healing from anxiety, from stress, from depression. Hold your children in your loving embrace and touch them with your healing love so that they may feel your presence with them always. We ask that you especially be with the family and friends of Lupe Sanchez as we mourn the passing of this remarkable woman. Holy God, we have come to you today with so much, with both joy and thanksgiving, and as well as pain and sorrow. We pray that you would hear us now as we come to you in silence to bring you the prayers that are closest to our hearts. Hear our prayers, O oh Lord. Thank you, God, for hearing us, for forgiving us, for walking with us in all the moments of our lives. Open our eyes that we may see 
your presence among us, now and always. Amen. And now will you join me as we say together the prayer that Jesus taught his disciples. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Hear our prayer, O Lord. Hear our prayer, O Lord. Incline thine ear to us and grant us thy peace. Amen. Now two disciples were walking on Easter afternoon. Their voices hushed and somber their hearts were filled with gloom. They thought that he was God's chosen one, and that he would Israel save. But now already it was three long days since they laid As they traveled, a stranger came and walked along beside. He listened to them, he spoke to them, asking why it was they cried. Do you not know, have you not heard all that's been going on? Some women went to the man only there to find him gone. Oh, foolish friends, oh, what hardened hearts. They heard the man reply, Have you not heard? Do you not know? The Messiah had to die. He spoke to them of the prophet. And to them he scripture showed, explaining all things about the Christ on that he made his road. Didn't we feel our hearts aglow, burning like fire within us? How is it that we did not know the one who was with us was Jesus? Jesus, the one who was with us, the one who was with us, was Jesus. And when the two came to their hometown, and the one continued on, they said to him, come with us and stay, for now the day the three sat down at the table. Jesus blessed and broke the bread. And then their eyes were both open wide. Christ was risen from the dead. Didn't we feel our hearts aglow, burning like fire within us? How is it that we that the one who was with us was Jesus. The one who was with us, the one who was with us was Jesus. We have to tell all the others and bring the news to them. And off they went. 
went back on to the road, back to Jerusalem. Did we feel our hearts aglow, burning like fire within us? How is it that we did not know that the one who was with us was Jesus? The one who was with us. The one who was with us was Jesus. The scripture lesson is from Luke 24, verses 13 to 25. And the title of the sermon is, Sometimes Jesus Sneaks Up on Us. My wife Lori and I have been married for over 40 years and I've learned a lot about married life in those four decades. And one thing I've learned is that if you want to really discover what a husband and wife think about something, then listen to their conversation in the car when they're driving home after an event, like a wedding or a family gathering or even church on Sunday. Now, if there are no kids in the car or other folks to overhear, you will also discover how they truly feel about a situation. Are they really happy about something or disappointed in the ways that things are going? Do they really like the daughter's new boyfriend or not? Or if they approve the hairstyle change of a friend or, or did they actually enjoy the food that they were served at the meal they just ate? It's in those moments that they talk things over honestly. Now, why do I bring this up? Well, I believe that the two people heading back home to Emmaus on Easter evening were husband and wife, and they were having an emotional conversation about what had happened to, in Jerusalem, as only a husband and wife can. They were devastated by Jesus' death. Now, one of them is identified as Cleopas. Now, if Cleopas is the same person as Clopas mentioned in John 19:25 then his wife, Mary, was one of the Marys mentioned at the foot of the cross. Mary and Cleopas lived in the same house in Emmaus, and so it's not unreasonable to assume that they were husband and wife. Both of them loved Jesus dearly, and they seemed to be members of his circle of friends. They were very familiar with the several disciples, and they knew a lot about what had happened recently. And so it's understandable that they were in deep grief at what had happened to Jesus because they had been eyewitnesses on that traumatic Friday afternoon. Now let's listen to the story, imagining that Cleopas and Mary are having a heart-to-heart -heart talk at the end of a very, very sad day when Jesus sneaks up on them. Luke 24, verses 13 to 25. On the same day, two of Jesus' followers were going to a village named Emmaus, about seven miles from Jerusalem. And they were talking to each other about all the things that had happened. And as they talked and discussed, Jesus himself drew near and walked along with them. They saw him, but somehow they didn't recognize him. Jesus said to them, what are you talking about to each other as you walk along? They stood still and with sad faces. One of them, named Cleopas, asked, Are you the only visitor to Jerusalem that doesn't know the things that have been happening there in these last days? What things? Jesus asked. The things that happened to Jesus of Nazareth, they answered. This man was a prophet and considered by God and all people to be powerful in everything he said and did. Our chief priests and rulers handed him over to be sentenced to death and he was crucified. And we had hoped that he would be the one that was going to set Israel free. And besides all this, now it's the third day since it happened, and some of the women in our group surprised us. They went at dawn to the tomb, but they couldn't find his body. And they came back saying that they had seen a vision of angels who told them that he is alive. And some of our group went to the tomb, found it exactly as the women had said, but they did not see him. And then Jesus said to them, How foolish you are! How slow are you to believe everything that the prophet said? Was it not necessary for the Messiah to suffer these things and then to enter his glory? And Jesus explained to them 
about himself and all the scripture, beginning with the books of Moses and the writings of the prophets. As they came near the village to which they were going, Jesus acted as if he were going farther. But they held him back, saying, Stay with us. The day is almost over, and it's getting dark. So he went in to stay with them, and he sat down to eat with them, took the bread and said the blessing, and then he broke the bread and gave it to them. And then their eyes were opened, and they recognized him. But he disappeared from their sight. They said to each other, Wasn't it like a fire burning in us when he talked to us on the road and explained scripture to us? And then they got up at once and went back to Jerusalem, where they found the eleven disciples gathered together with the others. The Lord is risen indeed. He has appeared to Simon. The two of them explained to them what had happened on the road and how they had recognized the Lord when he had broke from the bread. And while the two, two were telling them this, suddenly the Lord himself stood among them and said, Peace be with you. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable in thy sight. O God, our strength and our salvation. Amen. How awesome this story is. How extraordinary and how important it has become to Christians down through the ages. And yet, how common it would have seemed to someone just observing the scene on the road to Emmaus that day. Outwardly, Nothing out of the ordinary happened. It appeared to be a couple slowly walking and talking together. And they are joined by a stranger along the road. They come to a house, go inside. The three of them have a meal together. They, they come and go inside. There is no miraculous healing, no demons exercise, nothing out of the ordinary. If there is something unusual, it's that two of them some suddenly picked up and left because traveling after sunset was usually avoided and the third person in the party had seemed to disappear. This ordinary looking sequence of events became sacred because of the presence of the risen Lord. One more time, Christ is risen, Christ is risen indeed. Jesus is no longer bound by human limits. Jesus the Christ is no longer restricted by the constraints of time or space. Jesus can appear to whom he chooses and when and where he chooses. And according now to the Gospel of Luke, Cleopas and Mary are the very first followers to whom Jesus reveals himself. In his Gospel, no one who comes to the tomb that morning actually sees Jesus there. Angels made the announcement of his resurrection, but it's Cleopas and Mary who are the first to see Jesus later that day. And it's when they return to Jerusalem that night that Jesus chooses to reveal himself behind locked doors to his 11 disciples. Jesus appears as Cleopas and Mary give their testimonies of being with him, and they recognize him in the breaking of the bread. Now the promise of Christ's presence, where two or three are gathered in his name, this will be true for the next several weeks as Jesus comes and goes unrestrictedly before his ascension into heaven. And in each of these cases, as soon as the disciples recognize Jesus, that he was risen from the dead, then he disappears. Now often in life and following his death, Jesus surprised his disciples. The miracles and healings that Jesus performed in his lifetime were only for a relatively short period compared to all the time that Jesus was with his followers. There were many more ordinary moments than spectacular ones. And I'm sure that Cleopas and Mary wished that they had been aware for a longer period of time on the road and at the meal that it was Jesus right there with them. But they were witnesses of Jesus for a short time in order that they could be witnesses to Jesus for a lifetime. Sometimes Jesus sneaks up on us, and at first we're not immediately aware of his presence. In our passage today, there are several ways that Jesus was present with his followers, and this gives us clues as to how we may experience Christ's presence today, how Jesus may be sneaking up on us. When, the disciple, when Jesus first came alongside Cleopas and Mary, they didn't recognize him. Now, at first, I was puzzled by this. How, how could they not recognize him? They knew him. 
They knew him well. They loved him. They had been talking about him for the last couple of hours, and still they didn't recognize him. I think it must have been that the reality of his death was so real and vivid for them. Mary was right there at the cross. There was no question that he had died, and perhaps it was the vividness of his death that forbade them from realizing that he was alive and that he was right there with them. Because after all, dead people stay dead. They, like Peter and John, just couldn't quite believe the women's story about what the angel had said at the tomb. This reality of Jesus' death, that he died, he really died, he didn't sort of die. This death and resurrection can still challenge us in our faith. When Paul talked about why he was having such a hard time converting people, he said it was folly to the Greeks, this message of the resurrection. It was heresy to the Jews. And it can still challenge us, challenge our mind, because it's beyond what we can know. We have to accept it in faith. It is at the core of what we believe as Christians. Jesus' resurrection was the unexpected, surprising way that God chose to demonstrate the power of divine love for us. And so it's important that we confess that even though we are broken sinners, that we choose to love Jesus, that we choose to believe in his death. But that's only the first part of our conversion. We need to believe that the cross and the empty tomb are the way that God's love is shown to us and that we humbly and gratefully accept that love. We have to confess this love to Jesus and accept this love that we're offered. Now, when Jesus first catches up with him, he asks questions, and then, with unconditional love, he listens to them pour out their hearts to them. They may not recognize him, but they must have felt that love that surrounded them in his questions for them. And I think that this is a clue when Jesus may be sneaking up on you and me when you feel deeply listened to. When I was in chaplaincy training, Ron Erickson, who was a member of this congregation, uh, was the chaplain in charge. And he was such a keen listener. It seemed as though he could listen right into your soul. And you felt understood. And it seemed like he knew things about you that he couldn't know, but it was because he listened. Sometimes, there are, there are times when we experience a warmth that surrounds us when we make our heartfelt prayers known to God and, and we feel listened to. When Jesus vanished, the couple looked at each other with tears in their eyes and said, didn't we feel our hearts aglow burning like fire within us? Prayer opens us up to the presence of the living Lord. And we can sometimes sense this compassion of Christ in the space created by a loving listener. Unconditional love opens us up to this otherwise invisible presence. After listening to them, Jesus scolded them. <laughs> okay, that seems out of place after this everything else. Love sometimes comes in the form of discipline. Sometimes only a person, only a person who can tell us a different, difficult truth about ourselves is a person who loves us. Jesus told his friends how foolish you are, how slow you are to believe. He wasn't wagging his finger at them as much as he was telling them, I'm not going to allow you to wallow in your grief because I love you. He was challenging them to believe and he, would, he was directing them to see the world through the eyes of faith. He was telling them to believe the reports of the women that came from the tomb, even if the apostles did not. Sometimes Jesus sneaks up on us when we've wandered from the right path. And we need to repent like the prodigal son. Sometimes we need correction. And that's difficult to hear, as when Jesus told Peter to get behind me, Satan. Sometimes we need to be knocked a little off balance by a prophetic word, as when Jesus said, be on your guard against the teachers of the law, in order to see through the lens of eternity. Sometimes we need to speed up our slow hearts and actively respond to the call and demand of love. And sometimes that voice of love is difficult to hear. 
And then Jesus opened scripture to Mary and to Cleopas. He did this so that they could see how his life, how his story, was the fulfillment of God's purposes. He needed them to see that the cross was a necessity in the demonstration of the overwhelming and undefeatable power of love. Because everything that Jesus did, his healing and teaching and miracles, were done out of love. Jesus' whole purpose was to reconcile the world to God and bring forgiveness, healing, and hope. They didn't know it at the time, but Jesus was sneaking up on them as he was opening scripture to them. Jesus finds us today through scripture when we take time to quiet our hearts and minds and listen to words. Listen to the words of scripture. They came to Emmaus and the couple invited Jesus into their home. Now I can imagine that Cleopas and Mary didn't want this lovely experience with this stranger to come to an end. Their desire to be with this newfound friend was real. After these terrible last days, surrounded by death, they could feel themselves coming alive and they would only understand that this was happening when Jesus disappeared from their sight. Jesus needed the invitation to come into our lives. He knocks at the door of our hearts, but it can only be opened from the inside. And when we invite Christ in, when we voluntarily open our lives to Christ and experience the warmth of his presence, as Cleopas and Mary did. <clears throat> Jesus sneaked up on his followers in Jerusalem when Cleopas and Mary returned to the locked room and gave their powerful testimony, their witness to Jesus' resurrection. Suddenly, Jesus was there in the room with them. Today, Jesus continues to be revealed as we give our voices to our faith. We celebrate his presence as we give our witness. Christ's spirit is unleashed. Cleopas and Mary were probably not at the Last Supper that Jesus celebrated with his disciples in the upper room just four days before, but they probably had been with Jesus at other meals. In scripture, we see often Jesus sitting at a table sharing food, and no doubt they had seen Jesus bless and break the bread. Jesus chose this ordinary, sometimes daily experience to become a sacred reminder of his presence. And Jesus is present when we gather together to remember Christ's life, death, and resurrection in the breaking of the bread and partaking in the cup. Let us pray. May our eyes be open so that we recognize you in all things, Lord. May we be open to the discipline and correction that you offer us so that we will be awake to your presence. May our hearts be filled with joy as we recognize our stories wrapped up in yours. May we be eager to share the wonder in the resurrection and discover Christ's presence among us. And may we experience blessed communion with you, our Lord. Amen. And now may the grace and the peace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship, communion, strength, and comfort of the Holy Spirit be and abide in you now and forever. Amen. And go out in peace.